we have been talking about the birth rate decline. And many women are opting out because of the cost of being a mother, because there is a motherhood penalty. When people talk about the wage gap disparities, there's a wage gap, but it's, it's typically more so if a woman is a mother versus just being a woman, because single women are able to compete in the workforce a lot easier than mothers are. So there is a motherhood cost that is realized towards the end because we haven't built up that retirement fund and being out of the workforce ends up costing us opportunities. But I want to get into this article. It's a long article from USA Today talking about the fatherhood premium and the motherhood penalty what Nobel Prize economics winners research show. Sapna Arvind had always dreamed of having a big career in finance. My dad, when I was a child, would say, I, I want to see you on CNBC. So I did my undergrad in finance at New York University with those words ringing in my ears. Arvind embarked on a career in asset management in New York City after getting an MBA in finance from MIT Sloan School of Management in Cambridge, Massachusetts, by her mid-30s, she was also a mother of two children under the age of 10. While she powered through the early years as a young mother and a professional woman, by the time her younger one was ready for kindergarten, she didn't want to do it anymore. Commuting back to her home in the, in the suburbs at 8 p.m. just as the kids were getting ready for bed, she decided to quit her job. Her husband, an investment banker, would be the sole breadwinner while she'd be the primary on-call parent. It's a decision scores of college educated women have made over the years and which in part explains why the gender earnings gap is wider among college educated women compared with those without a college degree. In 2022, for example, women with at least a bachelor's degree earn 79% as much as men who were college graduates, while women who were high school graduates earn 81% as much as men with the same education level, according to Pew Research Center. This is also a topic Harvard professor Claudia Golden, 77, who received a Nobel Prize in economics for her groundbreaking work on women in the labor market on Monday, has spent decades studying. After collecting and analyzing 200 years of historical data to demonstrate how and why gender differences in earnings and employment rates have changed over time, she found that while historically the wage gap could be explained through differences in education and occupational choices, Recently, the differences among men and women in the same profession widens after the birth of the first child. Golden's research also finds this trend. Differences in both pay and the ability to stay in the workforce reflect differences in the division of unpaid caregiving responsibilities between heterosexual couples. I talk about the unpaid labor all the time. It is unequal and is typically like 90% on the woman. Fatherhood premium, motherhood penalty. Golden's research has also found that while mothers make less than non-mothers because of the reduced number of hours they work, fathers make more than non-fathers over, over the course of their careers. Quite frankly, it's the most disturbing part of this. Why, why is it that fathers are doing better than non-fathers even though they have kids? Why is the fatherhood premium growing over time? The price of being a woman stays constant due to social norms around gender, which is also somewhat disturbing. Golden says women with children enable men with children to achieve more. Men are able to step forward because women step backwards. It's not simply taking the shirts to the dry cleaners that women do. They are boosting their ability to do work. And therefore, if you are by yourself, you don't have the ability to have that helpmate. See, see how they are taking our words that we have been consistently saying and putting it into a more educated college. You know, it, it sounds very collegey the way they said this, but women are the support. And because of all of the things that we do in the background, it helps these men achieve their financial success, their career success, all of those achievements, because women are in the background doing the doing the work that goes unnoticed and undervalued. The other explanation is the American notion of masculinity that places self-imposed pressure to achieve more when you are a father. The internal sense that fathers have that they really have to run fast because they are the breadwinners. Let's talk about greedy work and flexible work. 
When it comes to college-educated women, high-salary jobs with long, inflexible hours exacerbate the gender pay gap. When women take on greedy work, which pays disproportionately more when they work a greater number of hours or have less control over those hours, they tend to not last long because they opt out to raise families. The pandemic, Golden says, had decreased the cost of flexibility as firms and workers have learned to use technologies to enable remote meetings. One of the big hurdles is business travel. It's an enormous barrier to individuals with care responsibilities. But if that job now has changed to, you don't have to travel to Tokyo, you have to Zoom with Tokyo clients every other weekend, you can do it. Yes, the technology is changing the game and allowing women to still be able to compete as long as jobs have the flexibility that allows women to continue to compete. Making greedy jobs more flexible would allow women to take them. When Jane Vernon moved to the suburbs from New York City with two preschoolers, she worked for a Fortune 500 company that had offered her part-time work during her early days of motherhood. What part-time meant was partial pay for nearly full-time work, but I made the deal because it allowed me to go to the office three rather than five days per week. Her hard work didn't go unnoticed. She was offered a promotion, but the catch was that needed to be physically present five days per week. Despite the fact that I excelled working part-time, my hiring boss required FaceTime, being physically present every day of the week and was not sympathetic to the demands of motherhood. She said that juggling family concerns was not relevant. See, this is this is where women start to falter because we cannot... I mean, you can, but you shouldn't be putting your children aside for a job, but you need a job to be able to raise those kids is a double bind. It's a conundrum that men do not have to, that don't have to face the same thing. That's the reason why their successes can still just keep going up and up and up where women end up plateauing. And this is what happens. She decided to quit her job. If she had the flexibility, things would have been very different. See, women have the capacity, the skills to multitask many of these things, but without having a job that's flexible, it constrains us. So our talent that we have goes untapped because we can't juggle all of this without society buying in. So this is a, this is another reason why the birth rate will continue to decrease because women are not, I mean, they don't want to do all of this. And then on the back end, when it comes to retirement or living comfortably, that money take a hit. Okay. She says, without a doubt, I would have stayed in the workforce. I did not want to quit my job. Her life as a Scarsdale's mom, one of the most expensive zip codes in the country, landed her in a familiar company, stay-at-home mom with degrees from prestigious universities and experience in the corporate world, including white shoe law firms, exclusive management um, consultancies, and Fortune 500 companies. So just all this talent being untapped because society is unwilling to allow women to have the flexibility to work from home and be mothers at the same time. Something has to give. Anyways, you guys, this is a fairly long one and mostly it's just going into other examples of what women have gone through. But you can see where this is going, that things just kind of need to change or I foresee the birth rate continuing to decline, many women being one and done. And, you know, it's just going to keep going that way until society decides, okay, we're going to let her work and be a mom at the same time, because some women are literally tired of this motherhood penalty. Y'all jump in and let me know what you think.